The Great Search brought to you by Adafruit and DigiKey. Lady Ada uses her powers of engineering every single week to help you find the things you need, Lady Ada. What is on the Great Search this week? Okay. So this week, um, because I am working on my NAU 7802 tester, maybe go to the overhead. I'll show that again. So uh, the NAU 7802, it's a 24-bit AVC. Um, it's got differential inputs, which you need because uh, it's good for measuring Wheatstone bridge type devices like strain gauges. But there's other, there's a lot of other sensors that are, are Wheatstone bridge that are very sensitive, um, although uh, strain gauges are kind of the most popular. And um, uh, uh, the so the NAU 7802 I ordered. Um, a few uh, months ago and it finally came in so I'll be able to make ours um, but the thing is that if somebody else was like hey I want to make my own you know Wheatstone Bridge amplifier I'd be like hey you can't get any because if you search on DigiKey this isn't going to come into stock till um, like early 2023 um, so I thought for the great search what we could do is I could find you uh, an alternative because I got mine um, but maybe you want yours and you don't want to wait um, eight, ten months until these chips come back into stock. So let's identify another um, good Wheatstone Bridge amplifier. So I'm going to look for something that's 24-bit. Um, I use I2C, but maybe SPI is also good, so we'll look for both. Um, and we want something that has differential inputs and something, which is pretty common with ADC, so I'm not too worried about it, is in stock and it has a programmable game. So let's go to the computer. So one of the things that's kind of nice about um, the uh, NAU7802 is it has, you know, the, the, the rate isn't very high. The reason it's inexpensive is it's like, you know, you pretty much run it at 80 samples per second. And that's great for just measuring weight. It's not good for measuring, um, you know, a lot of like EMG type sensors or whatever, anything that's precision that you need fast responses on. But for weight, weight doesn't change that much. You know, you put something on the scale and then, you know, you're okay waiting two seconds until you get a stable uh, measurement. But one thing that is really nice is it has this built-in gain. Uh, so programmable gain amplifiers is, is quite nice. It has this little analog section inside that'll let you adjust the gain. Um, higher gain usually means more noise, and so you want to have, like, a balance. Um, but, you know, the higher the gain, also the smaller the signals you can read. So, you know, you, you want a balance of, like, being able to read small signals um, but also not, you know, blowing out your range because if there's um, a lot of movement in the signal, um, your, your PGA is going to uh, overflow your 24-bit reading. Uh, so you can dynamically change it, which is quite nice. Uh, so uh, let's go to DigiKey. And so the chip I'm using is the NAU7802, which is... This chip, um, the dip is in stock, so if you happen to be okay with that, uh, they do have lots, which is wonderful. Um, but the chip that I've been using is the uh, SMT, the SOIC version. Um, and then if you look, uh, you know, it's not going to be in stock for a bit, and it could be even longer. So let's, um, let's find a good alternative. Um, so I'm just going to look for 24 bits. Uh, I'm not going to select the other... Uh, inputs. I will only go with one ADC because you're always going to pay for more ADCs and you definitely only need one. Um, and I definitely want to be surface mount. But everything else is kind of like up for grabs. Like I don't really care if the voltage range is, you know, 3.3 volts and also features, you know, there's always like a range of features possible. Um, and the configuration also might be different. Also, I'll show you the differential and single ended like Pretty much any ADC, once you get to like 16-bit, they're all going to have differential inputs. It's, it's, it's actually quite rare to not see a differential input on um, an ADC once you're paying more than like a couple dollars on it. Okay, so let's go for active. And again, we're, we're going we're gonna to later filter for in stock. Um, but I'm going to exclude marketplace so we only see, we don't see like the reseller uh, once. Okay. Um, so samples per second, against we don't we don't really care about the samples per second. Um, input type, I don't actually totally trust this, so I'm going to ignore it as well. Um, and then what I will do is I'm going to go for the data interface. So um, SPI is okay, and I want I2C. I2S I don't want because it's audio input. And parallel I don't want. And LVDS I don't want. So I'm just going to go for 
SPI, I don't know what serial is. A serial could be your, uh, or it could be SPI, or it could be I2C. And then um, let's search for those. And then, um, okay, so there's a lot of options, which is good. But a lot of them are kind of expensive. So I'm going to just sort by price, because that's what we, we care about. And as expected, um, the NAU 7802 are like the cheapest, so the ones that we can't get are about like a dollar or two, which is uh, unfortunate because we can't get them. Um, but there is this one over here, this 3565 from Microchip. Um, one thing to note is it has much higher sample rate. It has uh, 153K, which is great. It still has two inputs. It's also differential seeing on it. However, it's only I squared C. Um, one thing that's a little, you know, I was a little, at first I was worried because I was like, oh, this doesn't have programmable gain. Uh, it also has a lower voltage range. Like it only goes up to 3.3 volts. Um, but when I looked at the data sheet, because I was like, well, you know, I got to look to make sure does it really not have gain. It actually does have programmable gain. It has, goes up to 60, it goes up to 64 times gain. Whereas the NAU 7802 does 128. 64 is still pretty good. Um, you know, I think it's probably fine. Uh, it has, uh, you know, external clock selector, just like the NAU. It has differential uh, inputs like you'd expect. There's gain error calibration, so you can do... And it's, like, very tiny. It's kind of cute. It's like, hi, I'm just a little... I'm just, like, a little bored here. And, um, you know, if you search for... Uh, you know, a typical application for ratio metric, a Wheatstone bridge, uh, pressure sensors and load cells. It's very common. So this is, you know, what it would look like. Uh, pretty straightforward. You have the, um, like the NAU, it's kind of nice. It can do the, the reference in and out. So you have, um, you, you know, any, you know, if you're doing a ratio metric input, you want to make sure that your positive input to the Wheatstone bridge is exactly the same as your positive reference to the ADC. And so any noise uh, gets canceled out because, again, you're only measuring the, the difference between um, the, the voltage divider between the positive and the negative rail on the bridge here. Um, so what's nice is that you've got the reference in plus and the reference in minus and you just make sure they match up. Uh, and they just need an RC filter. So this is for like, uh, you know, RTDs, um, for uh, pressure sensors, for um, load cells, like, you know, the before. You also use it for other stuff like um, thermocouple amplifiers and stuff, which need uh, precision uh, differential inputs as well, because you're measuring little microvolt uh, changes on your KTEC thermocouple. So this chip will do the job quite nicely. Uh, it looks like there's a few in that family, the 356X. Um, they're all fairly inexpensive, comes with a couple options. Um, and uh, this one at least is in stock, so that's that's great. Um, but let's, uh, let's, let's filter for only in stock. The other option I found, um, so the that one was SPI. And you might be like, well, I really don't want SPI, I really want I squared C. Um, well, I squared C is a couple, but most of them are not in stock. The first one that's in stock, that's I squared C. Let's quickly go over here and select I2C. Not a lot of things in stock or, or normally stocking, um, but this one did come up. This is the ADS 1219, um, which I downloaded the data sheet. Uh, so this is fairly also, you know, pretty fast. It's a one a kilosample per second. Um, ADC, uh, this doesn't have as many programmable gains, though. It only goes up to four times gain. So, you know, I don't know if, you know, it could be good enough for, uh, you know, Wheatstone Bridge, but I think it would be tough without another amplifier. Um, that said, it has four inputs. So this is like... You know, I think you could use it with the Wheatstone Bridge, but I think you'd probably want, um, you wouldn't get as much signal. You'd probably want Amplifier. Yeah, they don't have a recommendation. So, you know, it's the one that's I squared C, but it's not, it's not great for that use purpose. However, it is I squared C in 24 bits. So depending on what you're using it for, um, you know, if it's, if it's not a load cell, it might be okay. 
If you are using a load cell, I would probably, and you don't mind going with SPI, I would say that the MCP35 6 series is your best bet. So you got two options to pick your, pick your poison, differential options. That's a great charge. Wait.